Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Semi-Perfect Podcast. I'm AC Race Best and joined once again here with Saber Spark. Saber, it's been two weeks since our last show. I know, and I, uh, I can't imagine why. Yeah, well, I can. Uh, pneumonia sucks. Really? So it does, yeah. Do Not, tell. Well, um, for those that don't know the story, uh, last Monday... I w- went into work after, well, actually, I could go even further back. The Wednesday before last Monday, I I developed a cough, thought it was just kind of a standard cold. I noticed it was, like, the worst cold I had had in a long time. And um, Monday, I felt good enough to go into work, and I started feeling worse and worse. And when I got home, I found that I had a 103.5 fever. Jeez. So, so I went in. To urgent care found out I had pneumonia so the first time it's been excellent and uh, Wait, yeah so what went, a great you experience the, you went to the hospital then yeah yeah went in I didn't have to stay at the hospital though some forms of pneumonia you actually have to like like stay I I didn't have the super crazy version Sarah Sarah come here my uh, my doctor Sarah here Sarah what kind of pneumonia did I have mycoplasm thank you that's the what. That's what I had. Isn't that like a character from Osmosis Jones? Mm. It depends. Did that guy have pneumonia? I think he was pneumonia. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I guess that would make sense. Well, how are you feeling right now? Uh better. Uh, you know, I've. Um, the big thing is shortness of breath, and you'll you'll notice it during this podcast at times. I might take a little. I'll take some extra breaks sometimes during a sentence. So it's like me um, going up the staircase then. Oh, you should see me going up a staircase. Um, it, it, it's actually kind of funny because I sound just like a third grader who's learning to properly use commas. So it's <laughs> like when I'm talking, I have a pause here and so you're there. Was yeah. It, that so. guy from Star Trek. Oh, shoot. William Shatner. <laughs> I have pneumonia. <sighs> oh. And uh, I'm doing my best because I have this nasty cough that comes with it. And talking kind of sets everything off. So I have like my mouse hovered over the mute button. So from time to time, if I get randomly quiet, that's why. <laughs> but you're like, man, I just love race. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, I'm back. So yeah, so it's just it's just a matter of like it's an annoying uh, sickness. It's the best way I could describe it. Especially, Inconvenient, huh? Well, I mean, because you know, for me, on the weekends I'm an announcer. Yeah. And it's such a pain in the ass to have to deal with pneumonia as an announcer. I could imagine. Oh god, I could imagine. Mm-hmm. Ah. So yeah, I mean, it's. It's been good. I've I've been back to work, but uh, I probably won't be done with the pneumonia probably until close to Monday, and then the cough could hang around. They say for a month. No, yeah, I hope that's not the case for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. Uh, we have a really big show that we're going to be doing um, this Friday and Saturday, so I'm doing everything I can to kind of like exercise my lungs. And, and try to get me back into being able to talk shape. It's just, like I said, it's just annoying. Is your throat sore? No. Throat never got sore. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird because it's like, I, I mentally I'm treating it like it's a cold, but it's not a cold, you know? It, it's just weird because, like, I've been avoiding, like, you know, milk with my cereal. You know, I, I'm like, oh, I can't have cereal today. When, in fact, that's not going to really affect anything. It's just, Can I, yeah. I need your opinion on something. Because I was talking to Paleo in a Skype call with, with uh, Matt not too long ago. And um, Paleo says he doesn't drink or he doesn't eat his cereal with milk. What's your opinion on that? Uh, well, what does he eat it with? Just cereal. Just cereal? Yeah, I know. That's huh. bizarre to me. I... I knew somebody who used to eat, like, I spent the night at his house when I was young, 
and uh, a good friend of mine growing up. And he's like, hey, do you want cereal? And I'm like, yeah. And he pulls out don't say like it. Don't say Cheerios it. Don't say it. and an apple juice. Okay, not as bad then. And I was like, apple juice? What are you doing? And yeah, no, he had it with juice. I'll do so you I one better. Notes. My grandfather would eat his cereal with orange juice. See, that's just weird. It is. Like, it like absolutely juice? is. Yeah, no, but but I I can happily say I don't know anyone who would eat it with just like water, because that would I, that's I don't some even... like bottom of the barrel college level like <laughs> that's all I got is che- just, like is don't che- do it Cheerios and H two O, please just don't do it. Yeah, nah. Well, I mean, well, any exciting stories from this past two weeks for you? Besides the, uh, the pneumonia, it sounds like you've been kind of recovering. Oh, I have I have a story. Um, it it's related to the pneumonia, and it's it's actually how I almost died <laughs> on Saturday night. Yeah, go on, tell, do tell. Um, I, so yeah, folks, I almost died on Saturday night. Um, <laughs> I, we we went to the racetrack, did our thing. Um, I I took it mostly easy for most of the night, and the one thing, another thing with pneumonia. Is that you don't lose the hunger. You don't lose, like, the want, the drive to eat. The appetite is there. But what's weird about the appetite being there is that everything else is not. So, like, I'll be craving a massive burrito, and I'll be lucky to get a third of the way through it. And I'm like, what's wrong? Why can't I eat? So, it, you know, naturally I get hungrier, or I get hungry um, more often. And, you know, we were going to head straight home after the races. Oh, you there? That was a cough session. Ah. Um, mm-hmm. So we were, we were getting ready to head home, and I'm like, guys, please just do me this favor. Can we just swing through in and out I just, the, the, I need the deliciousness in my mouth. <laughs> and, and I was hungry. I was really hungry. So we, we swung through. We got it. And, uh, you know, Tommy was uh, there in the driver's seat. I was sitting in the passenger seat. My dad was in the back of the car. And <clears throat> so, I, you know, we're eating. And I'm just loving this food, man. I've taken three big bites out of my burger. I'm eating some fries. Was that double-double? All- of course, nice. number one. Very good. And and I, all of a sudden, feel this French fry <laughs> get lo- like very briefly, but get lodged like in my throat. And it was the 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 lightest, simplest French fry. <laughs> but but my throat and everything, all my like, I guess you could say reactories were completely thrown off because of the pneumonia. And so I, I'm sitting there trying to just do your standard like, <clears throat> but it turns into this massive coughing <laughs> and, and all like, I, I'm, I'm choking on this French fry. <laughs> and the whole time, my dad's in the back going, oh, that's a new definition of choking puke. Oh, stop. That, like it was just like he was in the back, <laughs> and and in my head I understood why he was doing it. I'm like, okay, he's trying to make light of this really awkward situation, but I'm like dying still. It was terrible. Wait, so did I'm you? A- so t- I'm curious. So did you just did your body eventually just throw up for you, or did you have to induce vomiting? Oh hell, I mean, let's get details going, man. No, yeah, I uh, I made my way out of the car. Um, because I could tell that the coughing was getting to an, a more extreme state. And, uh, for everyone that is hungry now, uh, yeah, no, it, it didn't, it didn't end well. Um, it, it didn't end well. Well, I mean, my, obviously my it did. You're still alive. Burger, my three bites of burger ended up on some poor person's lawn. Really? They're probably like, oh Yeah. Yeah. That some dog is like next morning like, oh my god, look at this. This is amazing. This delicacy. <laughs> I'm yeah, so happy. no, it was it was bad, but 
And I, I remember this is the second time you've heard this story. The first time I told the story to Saber for everyone in the chat, <laughs> Saber was dying laughing at the fact that I was choking on a French fry. <laughs> uh, just the idea of it, like seeing on his tombstone, like cause of death, French fry. <laughs> Yeah. No, I was I was I was laughing pretty hard. And I was telling him I'm like I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for laughing at this near death experience, but by god, that's hilarious. The fact that it's a little french fry from in and out and it's something you eat all the time and it's what kills you. Like that would be pretty funny. I'm I'm glad you're alive, obviously, but uh that that's that's pretty funny that it was a french fry cuz I mean, it happened to me back when I was a kid. I think I was in first grade. I remember eating a hot dog, and uh, I, for some reason, inhaled it, and it got lodged in my throat, and it was at the cafeteria at school, and I was just kind of sitting there like, oh, my God, I'm going to die, okay. and I got all teary-eyed, and I'm, I couldn't breathe, I just grabbed my chocolate milk carton, and I just chugged the crap out of it, and uh, eventually dislodged, so, yeah, choking's scary, because you kind of, like, you see, like, this, like, you know from Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah, I hear that music all of a sudden come out of nowhere and just be like, oh god, here we go. The clock's starting. Gotta get this. Yeah, got to this lodge. Nine. Boo! Yep. At least there's a countdown, right? Oh, sh. I'm getting close. Yeah, no, it's uh, it was no fun. But, uh, yeah, Thus is, uh, dealing with pneumonia. Just a pain in the butt. Well, I'm glad. It sounds like you're getting better. And I could yeah. tell, talking on the phone with you last week, I was like, dang, he sounds so tired. I did. It, that's the thing is it drains energy. Like, I, I just, I could, um, I had to take the week off work. And, uh, you know, I just, it's a good thing because I, I wouldn't have had the energy. Yeah. Um, it's just, sick. but it's also a pain in the butt because it's hard to, like it, it's not an easy sickness to just take a nap with, because the second you lay down, you're like hacking. So it's just it's like ah. Uh. Well, so what did you do in the meanwhile? Did you catch up on any episodes of My Little Pony? Uh, you see, I don't have to catch up because I am caught up. You are caught up. Yeah, I'm yeah, the man. one who's lagging behind. By the way, before you're lagging, before we move on, I want to share one story for myself. So. Please do. I had to take my car to the shop this week to get my oil changed. And when I was there, they checked the air filter and they checked my tires and, of course, the oil. And they said, okay, you're good to go. And I got my car and took off back to my house. Well, then I got my car and drove to Atlanta to get my hair taken care of by my little sister. And along the way, the car was hesitating and just acting up and, and it was like, the, the RPMs were just going all over the place. And I was able to get to Atlanta and back safely. But I went to the shop the next morning to get it fixed. Now, in, but between the time of the morning and the time of me driving, I remember calling Race and saying, Race, what could be wrong? And you said something. it could be something small, like that's messing, like like a certain little like uh, like click or i'm sorry a little like hook on the air filter right or what'd you say yeah well no like there's there's little switches that they sometimes have to unplug to get access to things and i just figured it, it could be something really sim as simple as a sensor that could have been uh <laughs> attached speaking of which that's exactly what was wrong is that when they un unhooked the filter some debris came out of it and a little piece of it got caught in the sensor and blocked it, a little leaf, like not even the size of your like pinky fingernail. It's like half the size. And it uh, blocked the sensor, and that's what caused my car to chug on the highway. And I thought, wow, I was in a demolition derby where I was hit over and over and over by other cars, and my car kept yeah. going. Yet one little leaf got in the way of a sensor, and it just threw everything out of whack. Just, and see, that's that's though that stupidity is the reason that Tommy and I even have the low budget show that we do, because cars do the dumbest, weirdest things, and it's I don't know, it's just fun to go through and figure out what the hell. Well, it, they cars are. have so many pieces, and and that you have to work together. That if one thing is thrown off, everything comes crashing down. Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, so that was uh, 
I guess you could say what we've been up to. Um, I mean, you you asked it, what I if I was getting caught up with episodes or whatnot. Um, pretty much, I I was going through movies that were on the box, but uh, the big thing I was actually doing was editing the low budgets because I've been in a big push right now, like I've mentioned before, to get as many of those out. Right now, this season's probably going to be the biggest of of them that like are pushed as far as how many are being uploaded in such a short amount of time. So I've just uh, I've just been getting those out. But uh, yeah, no, we. Um, what do you think, Saber? Should we start talking about the, uh, the episode? The episode? Yeah, let's hop yeah. into. I unfortunately a little bit of disclaimer. Uh, unfortunately. What? I missed an episode, and I'm surprised because I thought I did not. I thought I was all caught up, but I, I missed something. It was the episode wow. where Applejack and Rarity were in Manhattan, and uh, I I don't know why. I thought I was I was I thought I was good. I thought I was all caught up, but mm-hmm. I think that was the episode that came after the Wonderbolt episode. So, darn it, I missed it. Well, the um, plus that was the same day. Which is interesting uh, that an episode aired the same day as Equestria Girls came out. Oh, it did. Yep. So, so that, that what? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that that partially well, there, there uh, might have had something to do with it. Uh, I mean, I'm not giving you an excuse here. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I, I, that's it's funny though because uh, that's partially. <sighs> I'm trying to think. What, okay, so Sarah, come here, real quick. Sarah, Sarah is our uh, Sarah. is our our local and loyal uh, pony watcher. Mm-hmm. Sarah, um, why don't you give us a brief synopsis so Saber can know what he missed during the uh, Manhattan. The one with Apple Dragon Rarity. Yes. Okay. Um, Twilight's bored to death. Yeah. Um, the map calls Rarity and Applejack to Manhattan, and Twilight sulks. Uh, so Rarity and Applejack go to Manhattan, and, uh, <laughs> oh my god, is that my face? No, that's not okay. your face. It looks like my face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like the that's like some Asian dude. <laughs> he thought that was your face. <laughs> to Manhattan and they realize that uh, Coco Pamel is back and she is hosting this theater revival but she's having a hard time finding <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> she's having a hard time finding volunteers. I wasn't able to mute at that time volunteers to help um, so Rarity and Applejack help and Let's see. As it turns out, Applejack ends up being the most helpful when she's she thinks that she wouldn't be because she doesn't really belong in Manhattan, but she's more helpful because she built the stage which made people realize that, you know, hey, they did have time to come help Coco Pamel with this stuff. And it's it's kind of a complex story. It's hard to What would you rate it? Like how, what did you think of the episode? It was all right. It's meh. Like, As an Applejack fan, yeah, like Applejack's your favorite pony. Yeah. Did did you feel it was a strong Applejack episode? Um, it was a it was a good one. I. Did Celestia show up? I at appreciate all? the fact that she no was kind of the hero of this story. But yeah, it was it was an alright episode. Alright, it was an alright episode. Um. I am going to mute this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe that idiot muted him. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah. So, uh, I'm curious to to know in the chat as we talk about this, uh, guys. Go ahead and and say what you thought of the episode or whatnot. Um, for me, I thought the the one thing that this episode I I kind of noticed. Is that things happened, I thought, Sarah, things happened really fast. In the sense that, like, all was, they were like, oh, no, we realized what the problem is. And then the next <laughs> episode, Saber, are you doing that? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I thought the resolve came very quickly. Um, granted, it is a 22-minute episode. But uh, no, I mean, I, I thought overall it was uh, a decent episode. Um, it uh, had some interesting moments. But I, I don't think it was the best one of the, like, of the season. I, I, I think it was probably personally maybe one of the... I don't know. Filler. So, would I would I be would I be bad in saying that it was one of the weaker episodes of the season? I, I she shook her head no. I I just it, it didn't feel very compelling to me. Um. Just in in what was going on, I just was like, oh okay, okay, so this is going on, cool. Sarah was very excited though that Coco Pamela came back. I know that that was a big big thing for her. So Coco's adorable. Well, let's talk about the next thing that came in order, and that is the Equestria Girls movie. Well, right, do you want to well, talk about the episode? Let's, take, and the... let's save Equestria Girls for last. Fair. All right. So, the episode following that, I did see. Wait, you didn't say what you thought of the episode that you didn't see. Ten out of ten, amazing, incredible. I love the part when John really? Delancey voiced uh, Apple John. It was great. I, I can't wait to see the sequel for the three parter. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's clear that you've seen the episode, so... The episode that followed, though, was a Big Mac episode, which is pretty rare. I don't think we've ever really had one except for the... No, I I, I think this is the... I mean, I know that he's kind of shared some spotlight with, like, the Hearts and Hooves Day. But this one kind of put him more in the center stage, and that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, dear Lord. We see what happens when you put Big Mac on the center stage, don't we? I love this episode a lot. I, I really did. Because I, I like, I think it kind of revealed something to me. And that is, I love episodes that have new dynamics introduced. Like, exploring the relationship with Apple Bloom and Big Mac. Because that really hasn't been done before. I thought, I actually thought this episode was really strong. And it, it's funny because, you know, throughout the episode, um, the, it was, it was a, uh, I'm trying to think of what direction I want to go here. I guess I'll, I'll jump towards at first what threw me off is that um, Big Mac is is such a not talkative character. Really? No. And, and yet, <laughs> I know, surprising. But but when that dress went on and the lipstick adorned his lips, he I don't know. It felt it felt a little bit hard to grasp that Big Mac would put on such a facade and be able to be, become such a different personality and such a talker, you know? I don't know. To me, I was like, man, that's one hell of a transition. To, well, to, I mean, to jump in. the guy probably thinks a lot but doesn't say much. He's not, he's not an idiot. And, I mean, I felt pity for the guy because you have, big, uh, you have Applejack going off doing great things. And I could see how that can make you feel a little bit jealous of Apple Bloom and her and who she loves. And, I mean, obviously, it should be where you love each person, you know, I wouldn't say equally, but in different ways. I, I can just see why he would feel insecure and jealous about it all. And that was an interesting place to explore for this episode because usually we get, like, Applejack episode, the Pinkie Pie episode. Oh, cool. Uh, it's a Big Mac. Let's see what he has to say. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Paleo is, Paleo is calling me out for nitpicking the episode. Paleo is. Jesus, Paleo, keep it in church. Jesus, Paleo, put your pants back on. No, well, I, it's not, it's not nitpicking. I don't feel like it is. It's just, I'll, I mean, I'm here to discuss the episode. And honestly, that's one thing that stuck out to me was like, huh. This is, it just felt like his persona that he became was a little bit hard for me to grasp that that's actually Big Mac under there. I could definitely believe that it's Peter New doing the voice, but it's, it's like, no, I could, well, you know, you don't think it was, you, you don't think it was really a big, what Big Mac would have done. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it was how talkative that character 
was. Well, that's what makes I mean, it so funny, though. It was a no, no, and don't get me wrong. There, it's just it's funny because that character I think has said more in that episode than Big Mac as Big Mac has said in the entire series. Well, I'm gonna go back to the day where you, I forget what episode it is, but there's an episode where I think it was the one where Applejack was trying to ah, shoot. Big Mac was was hurt, and the, and the episode started off with Big Mac and Applejack talking about a harvest. I think it was the one where Applejack had to har- try to harvest everything without anybody's help, even in the main six tries saying, let us help you. And she's like, nah, I don't need your help. But uh, Big Mac and Applejack spoke at the beginning of the episode, and uh, that was that was normal. I thought that was just, you know, I, I, at the beginning I thought, oh, this is Big Mac talking finally. I guess this is who he is. But then he went silent after that. So you're right. There was kind of a, quite a divide between then and now. And mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like the fact that he had, he was talking to because he, he had a lot in his mind. He felt a lot. And, and this was a disguise for him. So he thought, okay, cool. I can just go nuts because this, this is... This I is... do declare. I love that. He was all Southern Belle. No, it was it was funny. And I, I very much... This was actually... I I might even say this probably went down as one of my favorite episodes of the season. I agree. Um, and the thing that won me over with it wasn't actually the humor. Like, the, the humor was funny. But the end scene... With Apple Bloom and Big Mac, I actually found really touching. It was touching. It was very like sweet. like that. Yeah, like what you talked about, where you know it, it's like we finally get to see how Big Mac is affected by you know the I guess you could say the vision of Applejack, which as we all know, Applejack doesn't take you know her being uh, some savior of Equestria and and turned it into oh look at me, but at the same token. It's natural for Apple Bloom to look up to Applejack, not only because she's the big sister, but it, it yeah, it, it was just, I thought it was really touching. Um, maybe even a little bit uh, wet around the eyelids touching. Did like, you, I just thought, up? a little bit, a little bit, because I thought it was, I don't know, it's just, I'm, I'm big on That's funny. sibling, I, I don't know, I mean, I got two little sisters. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I'm not making fun of you because I also got I got a little choked up. I didn't tear up, but I was like, "Oh, that's so that's so sweet." Like the, to see him open up to her, and it's fun because Michelle, who is the voice of Apple Bloom, sometimes I'll have a hard time differentiating <laughs> the character from the voice actress, which is silly. <laughs> but at the beginning of the episode, when she was being a complete jerk, I was like, "Jeez, Michelle, you're just being a." A, just be a dick right now. You like text her, like quit what's, it. What's your problem? And, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. That's uh, completely different. Mm, yeah, yeah. Now they. What is this? Screwball said that he was shocked that Barry Punch and her daughter lost the race. Ah, I oh. were you surprised about the turnout or uh, the result? <laughs> well, I, I kind of like the fact that everybody was kind of like, yeah, we knew you were like a guy. And except for that one older dude, like that, that was so, uh, I, I felt bad when he like came back with a bouquet of flowers and he's like, where is that fine young thing? Oh, here's her dress. Now she's naked. <laughs> oh, uh, just like, uh, the, just like the old days. Uh, well, no, no, I thought, yeah, I love that too. The way like, like Rain, when Rainbow Dash turns to him and she's like, don't just think we're going to go easy on you because you're a stallion. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. That, that actually... Made me, I thought was a better move comedically yeah. than pretending that, or, or than having everyone be convinced that Big Mac was actually a woman. Well, it kind Everyone's of breaks like, a trope. The, the trope usually goes, everybody's like, oh, we're fooled, but it's like, yeah, we know it's you. You know, we're, we're not stupid. We know yeah, it's you. yeah. But it, I thought that was cool that they uh, were cool with Big Mac still doing it, you know? Even though they're like, oh, we, we know. Now, the, the thing that I wasn't 100% sure on, and you might have, like see what I'm talking about and go, oh, no, for sure this, um, is that was everybody certain that it was Big Mac? Did yeah. everyone know that? I think so. Because yeah, like, I, I know that it was indicated by at least one or two. Uh, like, I got it. Who was it? The judges it knew. Have, was it Sweetie Belle? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was like, so just straight up Mac. was like, that's Big Mac in a dress. Yeah, I, like, I love that. 
Yeah. I got a good laugh out of me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big oh. neck in a dress. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, the, the judges, because they even had that thing at the end where they said, well, we, you know, we have a loose definition of, you know, what it is to be a sister. Which is interesting, by the way. Because that's the case, and it's called a sibling, you know. Well, yeah, different. but, I mean, Rainbow Dash and uh, Scootaloo competed together. Apparently, anybody can compete in it. You can have, like, two Olympic athletes, or, uh, you know, Olympians <laughs> come in and, and knock it out. We're sisters. It's like, no, you're two black guys. That's, okay, whatever. We're accepting. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh, okay. Yeah, I um, I I, I kind of pointed this out to Sarah, mostly as a joke. But I was like, oh wow, yeah, because you you sometimes hear about like the lack of men in the show yeah. or, or whatnot, and, and this isn't this is not me coming across as like complaining or supporting the uh, the I guess you could say the argument, but. I did laugh when Rainbow Dash did make the comment, don't think we'll go easy on you, just or because you're a stallion. Oh, well, that's a good point. Because I, I, in my head, it was like, it's, it's funny because it's literally taking the opposite, um, which you can see the humor in the statement where, you know, don't, don't think we're going to go easy on you because you're a girl, where here they're saying, don't think we're going to go easy on you be just because you're a guy. And I was like, huh. That's it. Now, granted, it also came from Rainbow Dash. But it was just, I, I had that moment of, that's an interesting statement if yeah. you really wanted to read into it. It turned upside down. I like that. Because, I mean, Big Mac really wasn't in the best of shape for that. I mean, he's, this show he's, is so sexist so, against Well, men. actually, funny enough, since we're on the topic, Sarah, I, is she around? Because I want to ask her opinion. Sarah, Sarah, what? Sarah, come here. Sarah, come here. No, it's not. Okay, wait. No, that doesn't count. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, I'm, I'm, Sarah, that's, sorry. Sarah, I'm, that's my headphones. Oh, sorry. no, I oh. want to know. Um, so, oh. okay, I, what did you want to ask her? Sarah? There was somewhat of a, I guess. Oh no, you broke them. Now they don't work. <laughs> you broke my headphones. She broke your headphones. Sarah, Sarah broke my headphones, Saber. Can you hear? Okay. Now I can, but wait. Say something. All right. So, uh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so some people were complaining, saying that Big Mac in a dress was... Oh, wait, wait. I should probably unplug my headphones so she can hear this. Go. Some folks were saying that Big Mac in a dress was offensive to, I suppose, transsexuals. Uh, I kind of just observed people's discussion about this. I didn't really get involved because I thought, you know, I have no nothing really to say at the moment. What's your mm -hmm. opinion, Sarah? Do you feel like that... I mean, I... <laughs> What, what's your opinion? Well, if there's people who are in the transgender community who see an issue, then they should be listened to. And I'm not really in any position to make any judge as as far as what is or isn't offensive to them. So that's... You're so politically correct. Do you feel yeah. like, because, I mean, this goes way back to, like, Bugs Bunny. I mean, he he's worn... You know, female outfits like multiple times, and and now even a, a few weeks ago, Steven Universe was on stage in a girl's outfit singing his heart out. So, uh, is there is there a line, or do you feel like this is something that should be like there? It's, it shouldn't be offensive. It's just guys wearing girls' outfits, and that's it. Um, as far as this episode went, it's definitely um. Not as bad as some other things that I've seen as far as being offensive towards transgender community. Like the box trolls, for example. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Wait, did you I thought that, that was I thought that was an accurate depiction. No. Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Oh. Mm -mm. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you thought that was offensive in, in box trolls? Well, the whole thing with, like, um, there was, like, the whole reveal that Madame Fru Fru was, uh, what is the name? Snatcher? Yeah. <laughs> what a good name. Um, <laughs> and, like, you know, a lot of the men who had flirted with Madame Fru Fru were like, oh, ew. And it's like, you know, that's, that, that typical, like, knee jerk reaction that, that gets overplayed, that's, that reinforces, you know. They took that out of Ace, Ace uh, Ventura. Yeah. 
and it kind of reinforces those bad attitudes towards the transgender community. Yeah. I guess the question is, is that like, so what would you do, Sarah? Would you just keep your hands off of any kind of jokes like that in the future for a show like My Little Pony or Steven Universe? Or do you feel like that's something that transgender people just need to understand is not, this, is, this isn't offensive. It's, people, it's just a guy wearing a girl's outfit and that's it. Like, I mean, I've worn a dress before. I think there's a way to do you it. You have worn a dress before. I've danced with you in it. There's a way to do it and there's a way to not do it. I think Steven Universe, you know, it wasn't really... I don't feel it was played as a joke. I feel like Steven genuinely, like, you know, he wanted to wear that dress and put on a show. Um, and I, I don't think that the My Little Pony episode, I think it strayed away some from things that could have potentially been kind of, you know, iffy, but I think overall it did a good job yeah. In staying within the line. It's not like they were going out of their way to be like, ew, you're disgusting, Big Mac. I mean, everybody kind of knew it was Big Mac to begin with. So, yeah. except for that one older guy who thought Big Mac was quite attractive. Yeah. <laughs> Which, let's be honest, he was. He was. Yeah. All right, well, I was curious to see what you thought about that because I, I tried to avoid any discussion about these kind of subjects because they, they, they get caught up in the web that is social media and people get bent out of shape. So I just wanted to see what you thought and, and race what, what you thought as well. Yeah. Race, do you have any opinion on it? I think jokes are funny. Yeah. Com you know, comedy. Yeah. No, I, I, um, I, I am very much on, on the side of, uh, uh, I, I like, what, hi Sarah, oh she's reading, um, I, I like shows being able to make jokes without having to worry about necessarily being PC, yeah, and, um, so I, I'm, I'm not someone to jump on any kind of, like, direction, and, and like we said, in, in this case, it's, <laughs> in, in this case, it's, it's not even so much a scenario where if you want – you could argue that it wasn't a joke. It, it was just the way for the character to be able to do what the character had to do. So everyone's getting excited about Sarah in the chat again. Yeah, yeah, this is the new Sarah chat. So if you ever want to copy paste, they go, Sarah, 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 oh, Sarah. Oh, Pog Champ, Pog Champ, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. Um all right, well, I was just curious. I mean, I know when it comes down to, to comedy, like comedy shouldn't be taken seriously. It, it's supposed to be there to to shake things up, to give people perspective on the matter. And I totally think that Big Mac and the writers, who, by the way, are from Vancouver, who are, you know, not, not the writers, but just, you know, a lot of the folks who work on MLP are very sensitive and, and, and with it kind of people. So... They weren't going out of their way to make fun of trans people. I think that for some, for whatever reason, this fell into the realm of argument for transsexuals. And now, was it? Did it? Did this episode raise like I, some noise? I, it's weird. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I notice anyone say anything. I saw it on Twitter and Tumblr, and it was very like minor. It's kind. Of, it's one of those things where it's like, you no, know, sixty-five notes on Tumblr, or or wow. twelve people on Twitter, or whatever. It's like it's not. But it's funny because. Like, I always find it funny when someone's like, I can't believe this. Everyone's freaking out. And it'll be a Tumblr post with like 77 posts. It's like, yeah, everyone, all 77 of them. So not to belittle the people who care, but I'm just saying like, it's not as bad as people make it out to be usually. Yeah, yeah. Let's just take it all in stride. But I mean, to those who, I mean, it, it just, it pays to be sensitive. But at the same time, it, it pays to also have a sense of humor and understand where a person's coming from. So yeah. So that's my opinion. So let's go ahead and hop over. We got 15 minutes, and then it's uh, Q and A time. So we got 15 minutes to talk about the. Oh, uh, we we might need a little bit uh, more than just. You think so? 15 minutes. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But man, Equestria Girls. Oh boy. Part three. Part three. Saber. Yeah. What did you think? What did I think about Equestria Girls? Uh, the friendship games. 
I saw it with Hirasashi, Paleo, and Matt and a call. We all laughed at it pretty hard. Uh, first off, it's always fun to watch it with those three because they have great commentary. Um, Hirasashi is just fantastic because he's so... He can be so... I wouldn't say cynical, but he's he's got his levels of standards, and he'll be like, wait, what? And just kind of question it, but mm-hmm. aside the point. Uh, I, I thought overall it was okay. Definitely not my favorite. Uh, I, it, something was missing. Something was missing. And also, there's a lot of moments where I was like, huh, this is, this is different. What do you think? Well, I, I, you know, what, well, actually, I haven't even really thought about this point until now. That aside from Sunset Shimmer, this was the first... Equestria Girls to not involve anybody from the Pony Universe. Huh. Like I said, aside from Sunset Shimmer. Because right, yeah. usually it's Twilight coming on over, and then, you know, there's, there's oh, this, oh, that, oh, this. Um, I, what did I think? I, the second Equestria Girls remains to be my favorite. Agreed. Of them. Um, this one... Didn't I don't know I I felt like this one kind of had too much one dimensionality going. Yeah. Uh, the the villain, or I don't even know if you could call her the villain. The 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 principal. Pr- the principal lady. I who <laughs> essentially served as the villain. I guess you could say. Antagonist. I mean, yeah. But she, so was Twilight though. Well, that's normal. Uh. Yeah, like, just sticking on the the principal and her students from the other school, there was, like, no, like, I don't know, like, redeeming factor from them. There was no, oh, we're doing this because this. It's just, we're just assholes. It's like, all right, that's cool. So. Well, things worth adding is we have Cadence shining armor. They make appearances. They Did you, did you notice, by the way? Yeah. What? Her name was Abacus Cinch. Where where do you where does that name ring a bell from? I don't know. Abacus is a math. Device. Atticus Finch. What's that from? To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh my God! You're right. Yeah. Now that one goes to Sarah, but Good catch, <laughs> as Sarah. Sarah quickly pointed out too, right? Weren't you the one who noticed that? Noticed what? I'm not listening to you. Uh, you're not listening <laughs> to the. No, I just go back to your box. <laughs> Women and their reading. Out? What? What did I point out? Atticus Finch. Yeah. Yeah, but you also quickly pointed out that character was nothing like Atticus Finch. Was it a polar opposite to Atticus Finch? I guess. Sarah. Like, you guess? Sarah. No, no, it was it was interesting, but uh, that was the thing for me. It was the the bad guys were very Sorry. one-dimensional. Wait, this is a family-friendly. Podcast in it. Yeah, why? What were you gonna say? It's mostly family friendly. What were we gonna say? She should have been called Abacus Bitch. Oh! <laughs> there you go. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I just call I just called them assholes. So. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> how, how dare you use the the B word? I called him a jerk. Um. Yeah. No. So I mean, hi. I uh, overall, I found it in enjoyable enough to you know sit through but i didn't i didn't think it was much better than the first movie i i i the, i just didn't feel like the story was that strong it wasn't it, it felt very weak and i don't know I, I mean i i i there are things i do like about it like i like how dorky twilight is the human version or the mm-hmm. whatever version she is such a pushover. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked how you kind of get a feel for who she is and, and where she came from and how she has her own little version of Spike, who, when he started talking, I was like, what the what the hell? That's, okay. Oh, okay, what a weird plot device. <laughs> yeah. But one thing I always thought was interesting is how these poor animals are being shoved into backpacks. I'm like, how is that animal not dead? Like, <laughs> Fluttershy and Twilight. Like that's animal abuse as as, as far as I con- you know, am concerned. 
Oh, I love animals. That's why I keep 13 dead kittens in my locker. It's like, uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, pony yeah. up was one of the stupidest things ever. <laughs> oh, I was just pony. Oh, I, was, I was trying to pony up. I'm like, that sounds sexual. Oh. I mean, yes. <laughs> no, I, I, it was, it was interesting. I, I got frustrated at how Twilight made some device that somehow magically. Like, oh, you mean the arc reactor from yes. I, Iron Man? I'm like, I'm like, uh, well, there, there's a joke in there about how it looks like a birth control box. <laughs> Well, I thought it looked like the arc reactor from Iron Man's chest. Yeah, no, that's a good point too. Yeah, no, it's, I, I don't know. It's like ha, she designed this thing, and had no idea that it could suck the magic out. It's like, how did you design this? How do you just randomly have it like, the, oh, <laughs> look, this uh, watch that I made out of bubble gum and toothpicks, magically. <laughs> Also it's sucks a, into living life. It's a private school, man. Souls. Oh, I'll tell you what's really despicable is when the principal at the prep school is like, you know, if you don't do this, you're not getting into that college or whatever. You're not, you're not getting... Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's that's actually uh, blackmail. That's illegal. I wanted to kick her <laughs> so hard. Now, there's the there are cute moments. Like, I thought when they were doing that, like, the different kind of contest, they were doing a bake-off. Oh my god, that might have been my favorite part of the movie, actually. Yeah, the, the montage was really adorable. I liked it when Celestia, Cadence, and Luna were all eating cake. And I'm like, that's, okay, that's cute. That's really adorable. There's Dude, a... the, the part where, where Pinky just has that look on her face, like that drop the mic is about to happen type of look. Yeah. And she cuts open the cake, and the Mona Lisa's there in the middle. Yep, That that got a That got a laugh out loud moment from me. That was, was good, like, and I I loved her face too. Like that look just sold it. So see, the movie is full of moments like that where it's really cute. Or the characters like have a really funny little face or whatever. Like, but the overall plot just felt really weak. It felt really weak because the first one was very vanilla, Equestria Girls. Second one was really solid with these villains, and and that made it really interesting. Just have the Sonata and her other two mediocre characters. Well, I forget their names. Sonata, Civic, and... and Honda. The, the yes. Ultima, yeah. <laughs> so those three were great, along with the main six. And and by the way, I gotta say, Sunset Shimmer was great in the second one, and she was great in this one. Like, she's the, she's the character that kind of kept the movie going for me. Yeah. No, I mean, she... I loved the character development. Yeah. In, in the second movie for her. Um, there, and then, as we all know, uh, Twilight and and uh, her. I, I still struggle saying her name. Sunset. Sun, sunset Shimmer. Just say Sunset. Or Shimmer. Or Shimmer, yeah. Uh, SSS. I don't know. She, uh, I, I just felt like that second movie was such a strong one for her. Uh, like you said, though, like she definitely helped move this one along. Do you feel like a lot of the characters though in like I, I guess you could say of the quote main six in Equestria Girls don't really like learn? What do you like, mean? If, I don't know. I just feel like they I feel like I always see them kind of making the same mistake. Like what? Like like, like Rainbow Dash will be a little bit too arrogant and it's like okay, ha haven't we like learned from this from the first movie? I don't know. There, there's just like little things. Now, granted, it's part of their personality too. So you know what's funny though is how this pony up stuff happens when they go into pony mode, and I was wondering like what's gonna happen to trigger some of these moments. Like, like for Pinkie Pie, it's like you know making a cake or you know bringing happiness or a party, and then for Rainbow Dash, it's like, you know being loyal, turning back around and helping your friends. And then I was expecting for Applejack, like Applejack, does this make me look fat? Yep. <laughs> oh, let's just go. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's great I gotta point out there was one moment that kind of made me go whoa 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 and that's when they showed off some of the midriff of Applejack I was like wait this did is they? they did they totally did uh, there was a scene when they are getting dressed up 
And Applejack was wearing what looked to be a softball, like, uh, athlete's, you know, outfit. Mm -hmm. And Rarity kind of pulled up her shirt a bit or was pulling it down, and they showed her stomach. And I'm like, all right. (laughs) These are animated cartoons. But for a moment, I was like, oh, I forgot they had those. What, belly buttons? Stomachs. I'm like, uh, they never show oh. mid... It's funny, they can show long legs and everything else, but midriffs, you know, that that's what made me get, turn my head going, wait, what was that? <laughs> I gotcha. That's funny. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, it uh, it was... It was uh, I, I didn't think it was terrible, um, but it, it, it didn't amount to the second movie. The second movie, they did a really good job with. Um, now, I, I figure now will probably be a good time to put this out there. Yeah. I have gotten so many questions, Saber, on every video I upload, on every time I, I post something somewhere, and I, I just get all these <laughs> constant questions of, is there going to be a Bronies React to Equestria Girls? Is there going to be a Bronies React to Equestria Girls race? Well, that's, that's the big question. And I'm sure everyone in the chat, can, can anyone in the chat guess if there's going to be a Bronies React to Equestria Girls? I'm going to guess yes. Why would you guess yes? Like, tell me, tell me your thought process in that guess. He sent me a list of questions to react to for <laughs> the next React. <laughs> you know, you could have, like, come up with, like, a much less Or I just got, I got a gut feeling. You know, I really do. A gut, a gut feeling? Yeah, I do. Like, like in your gut. Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, well, let's see. A lot of people are guessing right now. People are saying no, yes, naturally. 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 Absolutely. LOL. Yes, yes, yes. They're saying. Now they're asking if there's going to be a Bronies wreck. Well, folks, I guess now is the time to... Give the astonishing answer of will there be a Bernie's React to Equestria Girls 3? Oh my gosh. Guys, would you believe it if I said... No, we're canceling this one. He's coughing. (laughs) By the way, I'm trying to find the actual video clip of... (coughs) (laughs) Oh, the tension's killing me. Yes, there's going to be an Equestria Girls 3 Bronies React. Awesome. So, um, and it's it's probably not surprising, but I, I, I'm kind of playing off it being surprising because there's so many people that have been asking, is there going to be a Bronies React to Equestria Girls? And in my head, I'm like, isn't that obvious? Like... Uh, isn't it? I mean, yeah, of course we're going to make a Bronies react to Equestria Girls. So, yeah, uh, the surprise. Everyone's so surprised. Um, now, what we'll do here for all of you is I'm going to have a little fun with, like, details of uh, React stuff. So each podcast that we have, I'll give a little bit of uh, some details as far as the Bronies reacts. Um, you know, a little bit of uh, the juicy stuff. So you guys, uh, make sure you tune in next week. There'll be, uh, you know, some more stuff on the horizon as far as how the Bernie's React is going, when the expected release date is. I'll only discuss that here. Um, Can we pause for one moment? Yeah. Uh, I want to make good um, on something here. Hold on here. I found the pick. Control V. All right, as you were saying. That's the mid the mid drift of Applejack. Oh, let me look at this. I found it. I'm very proud of. It. I'm definitely going to be addressing this to the Bernie's React. <laughs> that's funny because I didn't. Um, and that's the thing is I've uh, I've already filmed my stuff for the Bernie's React. So <laughs> uh, and I had to. Now now as you can see everybody, or not see, but as you can hear, uh, the pneumonia still has me. Uh, <laughs> I like this question. Uh, CJ asked, "Race, whose whose footage is going to be late this time?" Oh wow, <laughs> that's a really damn good question. Dang, you got me. 
Is it going to be you this time, Saber? No, no, I'm going to have on Friday. I promise. Yeah, we'll see about that. Which Friday? All of them. Uh -huh. no, the, uh, I, I had to film my stuff because I'm, I'm actually... A lot of people ask this at uh, conventions if uh, we film our stuff first time. And I'm actually very big about filming my stuff the first time I see it. And I knew that I had to film my stuff before the show that we were going to be discussing because unlike other people on the semi-perfect podcast i like to be up to date sarah sarah so yeah no uh i i filmed it and there's a complete kind of pneumonia twist with my with my footage so yeah yeah so so it'll be uh it, it'll be fun i i can't wait to see what everyone comes up with what are you doing, Saber? I was typing in something. I was, I was going to tweet that picture. Be like, hmm, MLP staff. Think we wouldn't have caught this, did you? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure 4chan's all over this. Um, all right. Well, it is 10 o'clock. We have an hour into the show. I say we spend the next 30 minutes or so doing Q&A. I like it. I like it. So I'm going to go get some water. Uh, oh, for, oh, okay. For those who, you know, there's a quick little break for those who want to use the bathroom. Um, here is a link to my Twitter. Where is it? There we go. So I want you all to submit your questions to my Twitter. If you can, use the hashtag SP, uh, <laughs> SP Podcast. And uh, go ask us some questions, and we'll answer them. So I'll be back in one moment. Ray, so you're going to keep talking to the folks? I'll keep, yeah, have the sick pneumonia-ridden guy hold down the fort. Plan C. All right, number back. Um, so I'm curious, uh, in the chat, why don't you guys let us know what you thought of the movie? Um, I, I'm just curious to kind of skim through it as it, it goes, but, uh, I know. Sarah, what did you think of the movie? It was ite. It was ite, says Sarah. So, uh, yeah, now let's, uh, let's see what you guys have to say. I'm looking at this picture that Saber's all excited about. It's pretty funny. It was all right. This is vinyl online. Liked it. Some people didn't see it. Eight out of ten. Unleash the ma oh, that was a very Disney esque uh, song. Uh, Pingo pointed out. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, let's see. Uh, better than the first, but not the second. Um, thought it was good. Good, but Rainbow Rocks was the best. Best of the three. Uh, it was okay. Some pretty good songs. It was freaking awesome. Liked the ending and the music. I haven't seen it yet. Pretty good. Now, I've, I've seen a couple people uh, post about this, about Equestria Girls 4. Um, and Saber might know the answer to this. But uh, is that is that something that's actually confirmed already? That they're uh, going to be doing that? 9 out of 10, says Nelson. Uh, felt that they wanted to do more with it, but they didn't have time, but liked it better than the first. So yeah, most people like this one better than the first. First time I saw the like, climax, it was hysterical, it was surreal, yeah. I'm back. So Saber, they've confirmed Equestria Girls 4 already? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It's that's what that's what everyone's saying. So, huh? Check that out. Well, <clears throat> there's a big surprise. <laughs> Not surprise. Um. Oh. All right. Yeah. Ready to do some questions? So, let's do some questions. I was I was having everybody let me know what they thought. Uh, Drummer Shy says seven out of ten could have been better. Uh, everyone was letting me know what they thought of the, uh, oh, the of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. A number of people haven't seen it yet, so... Go check it out. It's on uh, KissCartoon.com, or KissCartoon.me, where it's called. Oh, so is there... Uh, see, when I was sending out the format for everybody, I... Uh... Or you can go buy it. Or yeah. go acquire it in different ways. So, let me go ahead and scroll down with the first question so far from the show. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right. All right, 
I got one from Screwy. Well, shout out to Screwball. Yeah. Hi, how you doing, Screwy? Give our love to Dusty Cats. Screwball says, tomorrow is the global release of the, of the free Star Wars Battlefront beta. You're going to try it. Absolutely. I cannot wait. I don't know if I'm going to. Is it, like, what kind of gameplay is it? It's, well, have you ever played Star Wars Battlefront before? No. Okay, so it's kind of a bit like Battlefield. Do you want me Thanks. to explain what Battlefield's like? Yes. You're you're put on the map. You can pick different kind of soldiers. You can load in as your loadouts. You play with usually like 16 players. Well, should be more. Usually it's like, I think, over 30 or so on the old games, but that's PC. Mm -hmm. uh, you're running around as like a rebel or an empire soldier. It's a big old battlefield with like AT, -AT walkers, depending on the map. You have your blasters, and then Jedi's will show up. And you can play as them. Um, it's just a big old FPS. I mean, it, it, you can you can go third person or first person view. I usually oh. go first person, but it's great. I mean, uh, it's from EA, and people were skeptical about it because they thought that EA would ruin it. But so far, they've done a good job, and I have, I mean, it looks great. And I think they actually are going to keep the promise of no microtransactions, which is like, wow, that's a first. Cool. Maybe this might be the dawn of a new age, but let's not get our hopes up. Uh, Screwball, I will totally be playing some Battlefield or Battlefront. <laughs> Same thing. Battlefront. Uh, we should play together. I'll be getting mine on my PC if you will get yours on your PC too. All right. I got a question here from Firefrost. Okay. Asking, how do you feel about the pony movie that they're making? I'm excited. We haven't had a pony movie before, so I, I'm I'm very excited. Yeah, same. Um, I I'm excited to see what they do with it. Um, I I think it, it's I think that's just going to be a really fun time to be part of the fandom. You know, it, it's going to be a really exciting uh, lead up. I imagine. Um, I I I look forward to it, Sarah. You know the freezer's open, right? Sarah, 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 you guys Sarah. hear it? Oh, that's my Twitter account. Dang it! Uh, never mind. I was gonna do the. <laughs> never mind. I was gonna do the Sarah Pog Champ thing, but never mind. Terrible. Whatever. Sarah? No, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I mean, it always feels different. Like it's not Equestria Girls. It's it's a completely different animal. <laughs> it's a horse, but <laughs> no, it, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, I got a question from Neon Palette ninety three. Neon says, despite their limited personalities, which of the new Equestria Girls characters do you think is the best? A good question, Neon. Hmm. I don't know any of their names, but there was one girl who was, like, constantly telling the, the, the human Twilight, like, you should stop trying, or, or people don't like you, or that's embarrassing. Like, it's kind of mean what she's saying, but it's very direct. And I love the fact that she's so direct with Twilight, just telling her, you know, how it is. I thought she was just being a jerk. I thought she was hilarious, actually. Wow. Both, actually. She's a jerk and she's hilarious. Oh. oh. Um, God, it's it's hard. That's one of the things that I, th I thought that was uh, a little hard to grasp with the movie, is that they introduced, essentially, a school full of... Yeah, I was surprised, actually. <laughs> how accurate in only... real life. Well, that the only two people, or I guess you could say three people at the school that we could recognize from Equestria was Twilight, Cadence, and Shining Armor. Like, no, there was a few others. There was a few others. Uh, who? I didn't see anyone. Uh, oh, man, I don't know their names. One, uh, Hirasashi or Matt caught one on the bus. Uh, you know that one pony that Rarity had a crush on, but he ended up crushing on Applejack instead? Yeah. His pony version, or human version, was in the movie at the school. Um, the guy with a little, like, like bobby pin, I think. Or is it, is it a bobby pin? I forget. I don't know. What does he wear in a diaper? No, but he he's the one who pops the balloons at the party at the quince, or the quinceanera, or cutesanera. I forget. Yeah, Tenderhoof. That's the guy's name for the other one. He was oh, there. okay. There's, I didn't there, notice there's some, other, some other ones. Yeah, Fancy Pants was there. Somebody said. Oh. Trenderhoof, not Tenderhoof. Or I'm wrong. I'm just. Tre Trenderhoof? Trenderhoof. For, all, for all your pony loving need. Tenderhoof. 
<laughs> go to trenderhoof.com. You got another one here? Yeah. Um, though this one might be kind of hard to answer because I think we might be missing a word in this. Uh, Ozzy All asks, what has been over the show in five years? What, 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 you, what, uh, what has been over the show? I'm not sure I can really answer that one, Ozzy. Uh, I, I can. Go ahead. I'd like to. I think I think that uh, Celestia's tyranny has been hanging over the show for the past five years, and uh, that's why it's represented by the sun, because it's always kind of like that, like lowballing, overhanging. It's just crazy. I want an episode where they discover that she has no powers at all. She's pretending the entire time. <laughs> that'd be hope. That'd be great. Like the sun still sets. Like it's like that episode, or remember that movie, uh, Rockadoodle. Yes. And how he, like, he... What a weird movie that was. It was. That was an experience as a kid. That was a Don Bluth film in all its glory. But there was... If that rooster, they always thought that he needed to, you know, cock a doodle in order to raise the sun. But one time he missed it, and the sun still would rise. And they're like, oh, it's not him doing it. it the sun does it itself. So I thought that'd be great with the same kind of formula where Celestia sleeps in, and the sun still rises. And they're like, wait a second. What's going on here? <laughs> Have we been tricked this entire time into a Plus, monarchy because you lied to us? <laughs> I like it. Don't well, like it. They'll never do that, but it'd be pretty funny if they ever did. All right, I got a question from Cheese Puff. He says, "Have you guys funded them fighting herds?" Uh, and he asked that Sarah. He asked you this question too. So Sarah, the the question here, as you can read, as Saber and I answer. Uh, personally, I have not. Uh, have you? I have not. No. Oh. Jeez, Sarah. Me neither. No, I, um, I guess you could say I've never been one really for fighting games. And so this already didn't have, like, a big draw for me in the first place. I think it's a really cool story. Um, yeah, the story's of, like, great. Pay, pay attention to, um, and it looks. I mean, everything looks looks good, but uh, I haven't personally put money into it. I'm going to because the story just goes so far back, and they've got they've come a long way, and they still got a long way to go. Um, they're at like I think sixty percent funded, so they'll make it. Uh, they'll, they'll definitely make it, and I think even more so. So yeah, really cool. A really cool origin story, and how this this new IP came from MLP and from Lauren Faust. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So the real Super Brony, man, the real one the asks, one. yeah, asks uh, if there was a movie of you and Saber, who would act as you two? Uh, Seth Rogen for me, apparently. And uh, Sarah, who who's that guy? That you always say, I look like. Think of the hottest actor you can. Johnny Depp. <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> Johnny Depp would act as no, me. No, Chris Hemsworth. Who? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I get Chris fair. Hemsworth. Why did no, I pick Seth R Chris Pratt for me? He, Saber had chosen. Uh, Seth Rogen. No, I'm changing Seth my answer to, uh, to Chris Pratt. Mm. He changed it to Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Okay, that works. That works. So someone he draws a picture of of Chris Pratt and Chris Hemsworth, and call it Saber and Race Do America or something like that. I don't know. That sounds important. It sounds very yeah. important. Thank uh, you for your help. Thank you, Sarah. 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 I, I got another one from Ozzy saying, "Who is your favorite Brony analysis or analyst? I'm sorry, analyst." Uh, analyst. That's a loaded question, implying that we have a favorite. They all suck equally. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. No, I'm joking, Ozzy. Uh, I like Golden Fox. I like Tommy. Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. I was saying that with 100%, like, I was being 100% genuine. I was like, Tommy Olive. Oh, never mind. Shoot. Wow. Um,. Mm -hmm. Shoot, uh, I like I like Doctor Wolf's a cool dude. He, he he keeps it real, and he's actually like legit a nice dude. Um, oh, Anthony C. 
Yeah, Anthony's pretty awesome. Yeah, the, I, I like those folks. They're good people. Nice. <laughs> Tell me all. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I got one from Daniel Munoz. Okay. Asking if there's going to be a fourth Equestria Girls movie, which I guess it's been confirmed that there will be, and you could add one thing in the movie, what would you add? Hmm. I want there to be a brand new villain. But. Hmm. A brand new villain, but. <laughs> exact. Done. End sentence. Period. <laughs> we could use more of the villain buts. Um, like maybe Discord gets there. Cool. Oh, you know what they need to do? Go ahead and just do it. They need to go ahead and just bring both universes together. It's it's gonna happen. Yeah. I I feel like they've they've been kind of hinting at it. Um, it's interesting because if you notice when all the chaos was going on, the ponies on the other side were aware of what was going on. I don't know if they were able to see the humans, but they were aware. Hopefully, like, they saw Twilight and her, you know, Dracula makeup, and they were like, God, what's wrong with that world? Dude, I want to see, like, an episode later on this season where they have them, like, some portals are just showing up over Ponyville in some chaos, and they look up and they see the Equestria Girls movie, and it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's so bad. No. All right, I got one from Jonathan Oldridge. He says, oh, never mind. He's just talking. That isn't related to the podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, we got Nathan Bassett here. We got Nate from BrainyCon giving, giving us a shout out here. Nate, hope you're doing well. Good to, good to hear from you. I'm glad you're watching. And by the way, we I've been watching your, the <laughs> as you call it, the bullshit show with your dad. I love it. Keep it up. Those are some really good things. I, I do those. I had no idea how you and your dad could be so political. Like, you guys got some really solid, you know, things you're talking about that's more than just a pony show. They better be doing it, like, shirtless and everything. Uh, I think there's a couple of times they've done it shirtless. I have high demands. His dad's hilarious. He's very quick-witted. All right, so we got one from Daniel Munoz. He says, if there's going to be a... F oh, you already had that one. Okay, go ahead. You ask one. I'm, I'm, I'm repeat, repeating Imperfect this. Imperfect 13. As if you could have any celebrity do a guest spot in the series, who would it be? <sighs> if he was still alive, I'd say Christopher Lee. Did you say Ron Weasley? The guy who plays Ron Weasley because he's a brownie. Oh, you're Sarah right. Yeah. Ron, sir, Ron Weasley. Ginsley. I forget his first name. Isn't it like. I'd say, I'm going to say Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, really? Yeah. Huh, interesting. He's done voice acting, he was Horton. You're right, he was. And, yeah, and he was also the old dude in uh, the newest animated um, Christmas clock, whatever it's called. What's that called? What? The Nightmare Before Christmas. Because everyone's having a nightmare. Christmas Carol, that's what it that's is. That's it, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Thank you very I didn't much. I know Sam. what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> don't don't talk to me. Uh, you got another one, Saber? Yeah, I got one from Crystal Dice saying, "Why don't they have belly buttons?" Referring to that picture I posted of Applejack's uh, midriff. I don't know. I maybe they're maybe they're they lay them in eggs in that universe. <laughs> Interesting. Push. Um. Let's see, Daniel Munoz with another question. If you were to get teleported to Equestria and had to start a new life, what would you do? Oh, Jesus. Huh. I don't know. I mean, would you... They have no cars there, so you'd be kind of out of luck. Yeah, I'd... Uh, I'd probably become an announcer for those uh, pony races that they do. That, I mean... Because even on the engineering side, it's like, uh, well, I guess it depends on what, what you are. That that would you know, are you a Pegasus? Are you a unicorn? I'd be a Pegasus. I guess I'd be working at the factory and killing orphans. Um, oh, sweet. <laughs> that's so nice. Uh, uh, huh. I don't know. I mean, I don't do anything in this world as is, so I don't know. It'd be very different in the next one. Yeah, 
That's funny. I, I got one from Tibur Toth saying, "What was your reaction to the fa final scene of Sunset and Twilight at the and the ending scene with the two Twilights?" So, I I I uh, you go first. No, I, was gonna say, I like the, the design of the of Twilight going, you know, Frieza form, and then you got Sunset going Super Saiyan. Like I thought that was those are really cool forms. But it kind of came out of nowhere. It's like, oh, here's the part in the movie where everything goes nuts, and here comes the crazy. That was such. That was so reminiscent of the first movie. It, well, yeah, it was. Where, where you just sit there and you go, "What's going on?" We've been here before. Yeah, I was like, "What? What?" So yeah, that was um, that was kind of like, oh yeah, it's that part of the movie things get crazy. Uh, I, there was a scene though with Twilight. I think she reached towards Spike, and then she like she reached her hand out and she teared up or something like that. Oh my god, it's some really good animation. Um, it was cool. Nothing, not, nothing like you know we haven't seen before. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I the for the scene when the two Twilights meet, I was kind of like, huh. I felt like they blew their load a little bit. Like, why didn't we just save that for the next movie? Yeah, you're right. Like, like why did we have to just throw that in the last five seconds? I don't know. I just I was like, uh huh. Okay, there okay. it is. Um, Imperfect13 asks, if you had the time, which non-premiere or non-finale episode would you do a Bronies React for? Uh, you said you were going to do a Halloween one, wouldn't you? Yeah, apparently there's even like a Halloween episode that that I know was, was leaked recently. Yeah. But um, like that would have been cool to maybe try and tie in, except by the time the React would come out, it would be almost a month after Halloween. But um, oh, you're right, I don't know. Man. There's there's a, a couple on the horizon that that might even warrant um, a react. But as far as like right now goes, if I had to choose one, uh, God, I, it's weird because I, I, any of them I'd be going to the past, and I'm like, well, there's still some premieres and finales that we haven't done. So, so if I had to choose a non one, it would probably be, I'd say the cheese sandwich episode. That's a good one. Thank you. Do you have an answer for that? I don't. I'm I don't trying know. to brainstorm. Uh, nothing really. Uh, I, the, the, you have to be really out of the blue, like like the cheese sandwich episode, which is justified because of Weird Al. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just kind of an episode, besides the premiere and, and the uh, finale. Hmm. I don't know. I really don't have an answer. I, I can't think of anything really outstanding mm -hmm. that's worth like getting a separate brains react for. Besides, once again, the premieres and the finales, the Halloween episode. I guess it'd be kind of cool. You know, yeah. In the season. Yep. All right. I got one from Daniel Minot saying, "Are you guys gonna get Fallout Four when it comes up?" So I guess probably not release. for me. Yeah, me neither. I, I've I've only played a little bit of Fallout Three before. And that's it. Or New Vegas. That's it. Uh, Bob E1 asks, will there be more My Little Vegas? Uh, the plan is yes. Uh, there should be a fourth one, uh, hopefully in filming in the next month. Uh, so so we'll see. And then after that, though, there's probably going to be a while before I make it back out to Vegas. But, you know, you never know. I might find myself in a situation where I'm like, I could do the same thing where I'm at right now and then go for it. So hopefully I, I, I there should be one. I'd say in the next two months. I got a question here from Nathan again. He's, oh, no, this is his first question. The first one was a shout out. He says, do you guys watch any shows like The Walking Dead? Funny enough, uh, I used to watch The Walking Dead, but it kind of bores me, so I haven't really been keeping up with it. Yeah, you act like you've been keeping up with My Little Pony. I'm like two episodes behind, so give me a break. Two? Two, yeah, I'm two episodes There's behind. not just the one? No, there's a, there's a couple more. Oh, my God. There's, there's actually like three, I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. Um, funny enough, there's actually a, a number of shows that I, uh, well, no, I, I mean, there's not a lot of TV shows that I watch, but The Walking Dead is definitely one of them. And the reason that I don't discuss it ever is because of how much, like, I've talked about how I, I hate spoilers. And sometimes I can't get to an episode for a week uh, based on just being busy. 
And it's like, the last thing I need, it's the same reason why I don't really like discuss NASCAR on uh, Twitter is because I, I'm a person who has to like sit down and watch the entire thing through. Same goes for episodes of shows. I can't just be told, oh, this happens. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm good. So, yeah, no, that's, uh, I am actually a, a very big fan of The Walking Dead. And I think it's cool that they have their spinoff series going right now where they're showing what happened in Los Angeles. So oh, they're that's, doing that? uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, I've been enjoying that too. Um, and you know, for anybody with uh, with half a brain, they don't get bored of this kind of stuff. So, Game yeah. of Thrones, baby, loving Game of Thrones. That's such a typical. Yeah, I know. Terrible. But it's so good. I need to go back and watch the show again. All right, so I got one from Ozzy All saying, "Will you guys be going to Pacific Pony Con in San Diego?" Well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see now, won't you? Ah, the plot thickens. Uh, Swifty asks, any chance of more Saber does demo derbies again at some point? I'd love to. I can guarantee that that I'll never put him back in a car. What? Why? Dude, did you see what you did to Fluttershy? Sarah painted that car. She spent a day painting that car. (laughs) Just went and wrecked the thing. It was beautiful. Like, it meant nothing to you. <laughs> it meant nothing. But, 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 yeah, no, I mean, once we get Saber out here, if he ever does move out to California, it'll be a lot easier to uh, get him in a car again. I think uh, I think he learned a lot in his first round. Yes, absolutely. And I'm trying to save up money and get something out in California by, I'd say, late spring, early summer of next year. So I'm, I'm getting to work right now. And I guess the dream would be to have a job waiting for me in California before I move out there. But we'll see what happens. Because I know that, like... So it's a good goal. It's oh, a good yeah. goal. Well, I mean, I want to move out there. I want to start a new life. And that's the goal. And I've, and I've pretty much decided to go for it. Because it's either right now I get I get serious with schooling or I get serious with saving up for California. And I decided, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Because if, if I don't, then I'll probably regret it for the rest of my life. So, yeah. Let's give it a shot. Nice. Uh, do you got another question? Um, let's do. Let's do a few more, and we can log out here. So let's I got. Do it. I got. Let's do a lightning round here. We got one from Drummer Shy saying, "Are you guys tired of rarity episodes? And which she demon is better, Twilight or Sunset?" Uh, I'm not tired of rarity episodes. Uh, she's a great character, and which she demon is better? I'd have to say Twilight. I like how dark she is. Or demon wings. I, uh, I, I'm going to say that the rarity episodes are okay. It's, it's kind of, I think it's a little bit weird that we've gotten so many in such a short amount of time. But it's like, all right, if, uh, if, if this is what it takes, then I'll take it. She's, she's become, I think, a little bit more bearable of a character. Um, so, uh, to me, like, I know there's people out there that have, Loved her since day one, and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, as far as the she-demon stuff, I'm going to say Sunset, because she was a she-demon with a purpose. Twilight became a she-demon, and she was just like, ugh. Oh. Fair. I got one from Ozzy. What about me? But you answered, dude. It's my turn. Oh, good. Jeez, man. God damn Bryna, it. Uh, Bryna, I hope I'm saying that right. Bryna Thompson is asking, what is going to be the next Halloween Bronies Direct video? Um... <laughs> Because of the timing of everything with Equestria Girls coming out, this Bronies React to Equestria Girls is going to be coming out, I don't want to say on Halloween, but it's going to be coming out around Halloween. So we're not actually, we don't have time this year to make a separate Halloween Bronies React, unfortunately. So what we're probably going to do is uh, do a different holiday this, uh, this year. So we'll see how this all turns out as far as timing goes. So, yep. All right, I got one from, from Ozzy again. He loves asking questions. He's one of our biggest inquisitors. He says, uh, have you all been to San Diego before? I have yes. not been to San Diego. I do. My sisters go to school down there, so oh, really? I, uh, I, I've been down there a couple times uh, to cover some Monster Jam events. Um, Stubby asks, who are your favorite ponies and why? Rabbit Ash for me. She's always been my favorite. I've always loved her competitive nature. Um, 
And from day one, first time I ever saw an episode, her uh, her character stuck out to me. Uh, Fluttershy for me, she's just very adorable. Shut up. <laughs> I wasn't going to point out that yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Daniel says Montreal confirmed. I'm not sure. He's been saying that throughout the entire show. I'm not sure. I, I forget what that means. I, I, I don't know anything about Montreal, so never mind. I yeah. know. I've been seeing this, and I'm like, what is, st stop. What does it mean? Let's not talk about Canada. All right, go ahead. Uh, let's see here. I got four more on my list. So let's let's stick to let's do four more questions. So we can log off. All right, and I was gonna say three. Let's see what pops in here. I got four on my end as well, and some of ours might actually overlap. All right, go fire away. That's what we got. Uh, one. Let's see. Kestrel says, "Can you talk about fan built for all the artists and such? It would be really awesome to have you help out." Um, fan, fan built. <laughs> I that's Lee Tokar's. Uh, that's Lee to uh, Tokar's creation. It's uh, it's his baby. Unfortunately, it's new grounds, but like five years after new grounds. So, yeah, I'll wish him the best of luck. Go go check it out if y'all want to. He's got a website called uh, I must say new grounds. Fan built. Fan built. Yeah. So go check it out. All right. All right. I, let's. I'm gonna do two more. I think you can do two more. So I got one from Crystal Dice saying. No, no, no. That was... Oh, no. Uh, if there was a portal to MLP or Steven Universe, which one would you choose? Oh, Steven Universe. Not because it's because of the Universe Universe, but because I get to be a human still. <laughs> oh, dude, I do. if I had to choose... And, of course, if, if you're able to come back, but... Um, I, I'd, I'd go Equestria over the Steven uh, Universe fandom. Brownie. Because it seems so much more interesting like in the sense of like this uh, I, i'm trying to think of how to uh, no no actually let me put it this way it's more colorful and i i, I like colors technicolor ask sarah yeah. this question what's what she says sarah if you had two portals open up and you could go through either of them one was steven universe universe and the other one is the mlp universe which would you go through Steven Universe. Why would you go through Steven Universe? That is cool. It, it's, it's like a cartoon version of the real world. An what? alternate version. Okay. Jim's fucked everything up. Yeah, Jim's... You said a bad word. <laughs> uh, Nate, Nathan asks... Uh, he's He asks, Race, what's your thoughts on Jeff Gordon retiring this year and Tony Stewart retiring next year? Um... I'm a little surprised that Jeff is retiring already, just because he's been, he's still uh, obviously competitive, but uh, Tony, I'm not surprised uh, to see him retiring after next year, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, it, it's surprising to me to see Jeff go, but on the same token, it's kind of weird to think that there's going to be a number of drivers who I grew up watching who are all kind of getting to that stage where they're going to start retiring. And so I, that's just kind of, I guess that's just life. But uh, I, I kind of grew up with NASCAR in an era where a lot of people retired when I was young. So there was like a new wave that came in that I've watched for the last 15, 20 years. So, yeah. All right, I got one last question that we can roll out of here. Shifro says, Saber Spark, do you think there should be more episodes revolved around Zakora? We haven't seen her in a while. Um, I'm not sure she's. She's a, I, she is Applejack in black Thanks. and white paint. No. Um, uh, thank you. I, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll see her before the season's over. Hopefully. But, okay, I think that's it for questions. We did a good job getting through them. It has been an hour and 30 minutes, so I think it's time for us to close things down. Ah, yes. Race, anything you want to say before we shut this down? Um, like I said, guys, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, it, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a lot of fun going over <laughs> not just the episode, but talking a little bit more, giving some more details about the Bronies React and uh, all other sorts of stuff that's going to be coming up. Um, I just hope to see everybody next week. Yeah, and for those who care, I have a new video coming out tomorrow. If you want to go to my channel and uh, subscribe and check it out, it'll be there. It will be uh, funny. YouTube.com slash subscribers. Is that what it says? Yeah. What, what link is this? I don't know. I thought it was uh, my channel. 
Let me check this out again. Is this like a link that if I click, I automatically subscribe? It'd be so funny if it did. There we go. So if you all want to go ahead on my channel and keep your eye open, it'll be there for those who care. If not, then uh, that's all I really have to say for for now. We'll be back next week with another episode. I'll make sure I watch that MLP episode just so I can at least say, oh, it was good. It was bad. Applejack in Manhattan. Cool. So, all right. Neat. Race, I'm going to close this out. Good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Cool. See you guys next time. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah.